Hello everybody, today we're doing 7.4 notes, which is right triangle trigonometry, and this is our part one for learning the right triangle trick. Alright, so our objectives are students will be will find ratios for trig functions for right triangles, and students will use trig functions to find missing sides of right triangles. So trigonometry is the study of the relationships between the sides and the angles of the right triangles. The legs are called adjacent or opposite depending on which acute angle is being used. The hypotenuse is always the longest side which is directly opposite the right angle. There are three basic trig ratios that you will need to know. Sine, cosine, and tangent. So trig functions, we have sine, cosine, and tangent and it's asking us for A. So we have sine of A, cosine of A, and tangent of A. What that's talking about is this specific angle. So we're talking about <coughs> A. And so when we have sine, that means we are going to be using opposite over hypotenuse. which commonly we can write as O over H. Um, so here, if we take a look at right above it, it says so, and so that's going to be our sine. And each of those is going to represent those parts. So S represents the sine, O represents opposite, and H represent hypotenuse. So we have opposite, and then we have the hypotenuse. All right, cosine, so next I have cosine, which is the CAH, and what that is, is adjacent over hypotenuse. Oh, I had it in there, sorry. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Alright, and we can write that as A over H. Now here we have we have angle A. Adjacent is going to be directly next to whichever angle we're working with. And then of course the hypotenuse will stay the hypotenuse. So now we have all of the sides labeled for this triangle where we or for this angle inside this triangle. We have the opposite, adjacent, and the hypotenuse. And then tangent is our last one here. So we have TOA, T-O-A, and that's going to be tangent opposite over adjacent. So I'll write that O over A. Alright, so this phrase up here is going to be Soka Toa, and we're going to use that to help us remember which sides we are using for sine, cosine, and tangent. So some helpful hints, we will find trig functions of acute angles this year. Label your sides as opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. All ratios must be reduced and rationalized if needed. So that just means we need to simplify those fractions, rationals, um, we don't want to leave it as if we have 10 over 5. We want to reduce that as much as possible. And then labeling our sides, yes, we want to always label all of our sides all the time so we know what we're working with. Alright, so example 1, we want to find it the requested trig ratio. So if we take a look first, we're dealing with um, angle A. So angle A here, I want to figure out, I need to know the opposite, adjacent, and the hypotenuse. The nice thing is the hypotenuse will always be the hypotenuse. Opposite, we have O, and then we have adjacent, which is A. Okay, so now I can go ahead and find each of these. So we have SO, which is opposite and a hypotenuse, so I'm going to use the opposite number, which is 6, and then the hypotenuse, which is 10. So now I have to go ahead and simplify that. So we have 3 over 5. All right, so cosine is so ka, so a, h. We have 
8 over 10. So now I can reduce that to 4 over 5. And then tangent is TOA, so opposite and adjacent. I have 6 over 8. Now I can simplify that to 3 over 4. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at um, angle C. So when we switch to angle C, that's going to change up where each of our angles lie. So let's see, our hypotenuse is going to stay the hypotenuse. So I'm using orange for angle C. Opposite now is over where 8 is, and adjacent is where 6 is. So it's really important to pay attention which angle you're working with. The nice thing is the hypotenuse will stay the hypotenuse, but our opposite and our adjacent do switch depending on which angle we're looking at. Uh, the orange and the pink on my end kind of look similar, so I went ahead and highlighted them. So we're still using so for sine, so it's opposite over hypotenuse, so I have 8 over 10, so we can reduce that to 4 over 5. Cosine, so we have co adjacent over hypotenuse, so I have 6 over 10, which will give me 3 over 5. And then tangent, which is TOA, opposite is 8, and adjacent is 6, which will give me 4 over 3. So it is really important to pay attention um, which angle we're working with, because as you can tell, we have different answers depending on which angle we're looking at. Something fun though, if we take a look here at all of our final answers, I'm going to highlight them for us. There's a couple patterns. So here, if we go across from sine of A and cosine of C, they are the same value. And then sine of C and cosine of A, those are the same value. So um, they are related to one another. They're just opposite from one another from like sine and cosine. And then with tangent, all it does is flip the fraction upside down. So for tangent of A, we have 3 over 4. Tangent of C, we have 4 over 3. So those are fun tricks. Um, once you really get used to this and, you know, you have to find a bunch of sine and cosines for different angles, you can start recognizing those relationships. So reminder, we only find trig functions for the inside angles. Or acute, sorry, not inside. Acute angles. Of a right triangle. That just means we don't use the 90 degree angle, so I couldn't say, okay, let's use um, angle D and find that. That one should always be that 90 degree angle. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and take a look at number or example two and try this one out. Then pause the video, then when you unpause, the answer should come back shortly. All right, there's example two. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at example three. So which angle has a cosine of three over four? So if we're looking for cosine, remember that, so co adjacent over hypotenuse. So the nice thing is H, it will always be five, so we just have to figure out which one is going to be our adjacent. So if three is the number we're looking for, three has to be adjacent, and the closest one besides the 90 degree angle will be angle A. So therefore, angle A, if I used angle A, would give me a cosine of three over five. All right, let's go ahead. I want you guys to take a look at example four. I'm gonna give that a shot. So what is cosine X? So pretty much what is this angle going to be. All right, so remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I want the adjacent angle and the hypotenuse angle. So it should be 40 over 41, so that would be D. All right, now example five. We wanna find the following values by using the calculator round to three decimal places. So 
we want to first make sure that our calculator is in degrees. So if you guys can go ahead and grab your calculator out. If you have a scientific calculator, on the top of your calculator, you're going to have the button second. And then right next to it, it's going to say DRG. If you click on the DRG button, there's going to be three parts that pop up <clears throat> once you click on DRG. Excuse me. We're going to have something that says DEG, RAD, and GRD. So the one that says DEG is the degree one, and we want to make sure we click on that. So the little uh, lines underneath should be underneath that. Just click enter once you are over that, and then your calculator is in degrees. So now what we're going to do is start plugging this stuff into the calculator. So sign. We're going to press the button that says sign. Once you do that, on your calculator, it should say sign with a little parenthesis. Then we're going to put our angle, so 18 degrees. And then we can go ahead and close that with the parenthesis. We'll press equal, and we want to round to three decimal places. So I have 0 0.309. All right. Let's do that one more time together, and then I'll let you try the other two. Let's go ahead and do C, so we change it up with tangent. So we have tan, so there's a button that says tan. It'll pop up that parenthesis, plug in 32, close your parenthesis, then press your equal sign. And now round to three decimal places, so 6.625. All right, go ahead and try B and D, another tangent, and then a cosine one. I'll give you guys a second to try that. All right, so for B, you should get 0.375. And then for D, you get 5.671. All right, so writing equations with trig functions. First, we're deciding which trig function matches the picture, and then we make an equation. We have the trig function, then the angle, equals our fraction. So remember we use the SOHCAHTOA to line up our fraction with the OH, AH, or OA. Then we solve for the variable by using inverse operations. So division, multiplication, all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and start with number three. So we have to figure out which trig function we're working with. So we first need to identify, well okay, here is the angle that we have. And we can go ahead and label all of the sides. So we have the hypotenuse, we have opposite, and then of course we have the adjacent. So it looks like I'm dealing with opposite and adjacent, which is going to be my TOA, so my tangent. So I know I'm going to have tan of 31. So remember we have that angle measure there. Tan of 31 is equal to opposite over adjacent. So x over 20. And it is very important to remember that tangent of 30, this is all one term. So the tangent and the 31 are connected to one another. We can't just um, you know, divide out that 31. There's other ways to do it, which we'll talk about that tomorrow or whenever you have this class next. All right, so now is where the opposite um, fun or inverse operations come in. So if x divided by 20, so in order to get x by itself, I'm going to multiply by 20. So I now have 20 times tangent of 31 equals x. And now I can plug this into your calculator. So if you grab your cal graphing calculator, not graphing, sorry, scientific calculator, you press 20, then press the tan button, Plug in your 31, close the parenthesis, then press equal. And it wants to the nearest hundredth, so we want those two decimal places. So I have 12.02. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at example four. So first we have 85, that's the angle we're dealing with. So I have hypotenuse, I have opposite, and then of course I have my adjacent. So it looks like I have OH, which is going to be SO, so SO, which is sine, so I have sine of 85 
is equal to, we have opposite over hypotenuse, so x over 8. We're going to do that same process again. Go ahead and multiply by 8 on both sides. Cross out that 8. Now I have 8 sine of 85 equals x. And now I can figure out what does x equal. So plug in 8, press sine, then 85, close your parenthesis, and press equal. We should get 7.97. All right, and let's go and try one more together before you guys try a few on your own. So we have example five, so 35 degrees. Let's see, we have our hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. So we're dealing with adjacent and hypotenuse. So that's uh, so adjacent, or cosine, sorry. So cosine of 35 is equal to 16 over x. Now, when our x is in the denominator, there's this cool thing we can do where we can take cosine of 35 and switch it with x. We can switch it with whatever our denominator is. So if I really wanted to, I can do that um, with example 4 as well. But there was no need to do that because x was already in the numerator position. So I can go ahead and switch these. And I now have x equals 16 divided by cosine of 35. So now we can go ahead and plug that into the calculator just as so. So 16 division bar, and then cosine of 35. Make sure to close that parenthesis. And so x equals 19.53. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and try 6, 7, and 8. Pause the video, try them out. And then when you look back, the solution should be there. There is 6, 7, and 8 with the label triangles, the solution. Take a look at that. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the last part of our notes today. So we have angle of elevation, which is the line of sight, um, angle made between an object and the ground. So if you think about if you were standing on the ground, if you were looking up at something, your angle of elevation be where you were looking. So what is the angle of elevation? in the picture shown. So if we were to take that angle of elevation, um, I would use the 25 degrees. So 25 degrees is the angle of elevation. All right, number nine, an airplane has an angle of elevation of 15 degrees from the runway when it takes off. The airplane picture below is 2,000 feet along the ground from its takeoff point from the or find the height h of the airplane round to the answer to the nearest foot. So our goal is to find the h over here. Here's our angle of elevation. So we have the hypotenuse, we have opposite, and we have adjacent. So it looks like we're going to be using tangent. So tangent of 15 is going to equal the h over 2000. All right, so I'll go ahead and multiply by 2,000 on each side in order to find the height. And so remember, we are rounding to the nearest foot. So when we plug that into the calculator, we'll get the height is 536. Oh, and we should probably put feet. 536 feet in the air. All right, and then number 10, a 10-foot ladder is leaning up against the side of a house with an angle of elevation of 62 degrees, let's go ahead and put that into our, ca or our calculator, our picture, how far up the side of the house does the ladder reach? So our goal is to figure out how far up does it go? So this is the distance we're trying to find. So once again, we have the hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. So it looks like we're using sine. So sine of 62 is equal to x over 10. And multiply by 10 on both sides. Now I have 10 sine of 62 equals x. Let's see, it doesn't tell us specifically how many decimals to go to, so let's just round to one decimal. So it's about 8.8 .8 feet up the wall. 
Alright, and that is the end of 7.4 and part 1 of our right triangle trigonometry. Um, be sure to ask questions if you have any on the notes, um, and have a wonderful rest of your day.